Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Kimon Bekelis. I'm uh, the Chair of Neurointerventional Services for Catholic Health Services on Long Island uh, and the Director of the Comprehensive Stroke Center here at Good Samaritan Hospital. I want to welcome everybody uh, for yet another Good Samaritan University virtual class. Today is going to be a little different than our usual, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, presentations. Uh, it's uh, our distinct privilege today to have a special guest, uh, Todd Crawford, uh, who I'm going to talk about uh, in a second, uh, as we're talking about brain aneurysm awareness. And as a lot of you know, uh, we've spoken about this in the past, September is Brain Aneurysm Awareness Month, and we're nearing its end currently. Uh, so we want to wrap the, the month with a very exciting uh, conversation with Todd, speak a little bit about what, what the status of brain aneurysm treatment is in the United States uh, awareness, uh, and also uh, then discuss what the Lisa Cole Grossi Foundation, which Todd is um, heading, has really uh, done so far and what they're planning on doing uh, into uh, uh, to spread awareness for uh, for brain aneurysms. Uh, Todd, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Kamal. Pleasure. Um, so uh, these are my disclosures. As you know, every time we have to talk about our financial interests, nothing of what we're going to talk about today has much to do with uh, with money. So this is Todd's beautiful family uh, before uh, uh, he learned about brain aneurysms, I think. Is that right? Yeah, right. Um, so th this is pretty common, right? Uh, brain aneurysms, uh, uh, there's not a lot of uh, knowledge out there. And if it weren't for Todd uh, and his foundation, uh, you know, we, we, we wouldn't be able to spread the word as effectively. So, so most of the times we don't know about brain aneurysms, and that's why a lot of people call them the silent killer. We don't know about them. The, the person that has them doesn't know about them, but also the community uh, in general does not have a lot of awareness. Um, so, so, so Todd, uh, getting, uh, and he'll share his story uh, soon with you, uh, but, but from his uh, tremendous personal loss, uh, he was able to overcome that and, and turn that into uh, a mission to help others and to spread awareness for this deadly disease and try to get ahead of the problem and really uh, uh, treat treat folks before uh, there's a rupture, before a family loses another uh, loved one. Uh, so, so he was, uh, uh, in his prior life and career, uh, he, he was uh, involved in the media and, and uh, you know, he was uh, out there. Uh, and so, so he leveraged that into bringing a lot of star power into the mission of brain aneurysm awareness, uh, and and so we're we're very happy to have him here with us today. Uh, so let me let me uh, talk a little bit about what aneurysms uh, are, uh, and you know you'll hear a lot of things about stroke out there, and and strokes definitely one of the diseases we treat, but uh, I think uh, you know ischemic stroke rather or the stroke where there's not enough blood going into the brain is certainly one of the components uh, of interest for us in neurovascular neurosurgery but brain aneurysms are really uh, our main focus when it comes to preventable uh, death uh, or disability from neurovascular disease and, and uh, what brain aneurysms do is when they rupture they cause bleeding uh, inside or outside the brain and the covering of the brain what we call the subarachnoid space and that can be fatal in almost half of the patients immediately. And then there's a few others that make it to the hospital and never make it out of it. And uh, a very small minority will survive after a brain aneurysm rupture. Uh, as, as I said, you know, 50% of the patients would die right away. And this is what exactly a brain aneurysm looks like. It's, it's like a balloon on the side of the blood vessel. It's a weak spot. And, and therefore, if um, there is, for whatever reason, there's a rupture, uh, blood spreads everywhere, and it can be catastrophic. Uh, so, you know, we've developed treatments for brain aneurysms uh, over the years, and now uh, the science and the technology surrounding brain aneurysms has been so phenomenal that we very rarely open the head these days to treat brain aneurysms. Uh, so you see on the left is the traditional treatment option for brain aneurysms, which is called clipping, which means we open the head and place a clip at the neck of the aneurysm. And on the right-hand side is one of the endovascular treatments, which means through the blood vessel. And that is done through the groin or through the wrist, uh, through the femoral or the radial artery. And what we do is we navigate our catheters and wires all the way up inside the brain and eventually fill the aneurysm with platinum coils, put stents, balloons, uh, whatever have you, saccular devices to really uh, create uh, uh, a block, uh, uh, to block the blood flow into the aneurysm 
and eventually cure it. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how you can treat uh, these folks. So the first, the first case that I'm going to show you is a very young person, 27 years old. She comes in with the worst headache of her life, and you know, this comes uh, to play a little bit. And, and Todd will talk about about knowing the signs and symptoms is very important. So this girl said, "I'm having the worst headache of my life. There's definitely something wrong. Call EMS." And EMS came to her house and said, you're having a headache, you're 27, you're fine, right? And, and that can be deadly. Uh, and we know that very well. And she insisted. She was her own best advocate. So she went to the hospital, uh, had a head CT that showed a subarachnoid hemorrhage, the, the result of a ruptured aneurysm. And she wasn't affected severely at that time neurologically, but certainly her aneurysm had ruptured. And if you see in the top left image, that aneurysm is tiny. It's a 1.2 millimeter aneurysm that ruptured in her case. And we were able, on the right-hand side, you see the aneurysm is missing because we were able to coil it with a nano coil, a really, really tiny coil. That comes to show you how significant the advances of endovascular technology have been for us to be able to create a one millimeter sphere uh, through the groin uh, into the head. And, and I like to sh share this story because obviously she's very young. You ne almost never think of a brain aneurysm at somebody who's 27, so always think of a brain aneurysm in, in any age group, but also because, you know, she was a very active person. She was a kickboxer, and she went back to kickboxing after uh, she was treated. So she's obviously one of the lucky ones, but not everybody will be uh, if an aneurysm ruptures, and so we need to get ahead of the problem. Now, another lady, 58 years old, she had double vision, uh, and uh, also she was, she was smart enough to seek care. That's an, one of the other signs that is very important to look for, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later, but, but uh, Todd's organization, the Lisa Foundation, has had one of the most impactful PSAs when it comes to uh, brain aneurysms, and in that, these are the signs that, uh, as I'm going through stuff, these are the signs that they mention. Worst headache of your life, double vision, nausea and vomiting, things like that. You gotta know the signs and symptoms. Uh, you know, it can mean the difference uh, of survival versus death, in her case, she was very worried about her double vision, came to the hospital, and uh, her imaging demonstrated this very large aneurysm, also was coiled. You can see the result of the coiling at the bottom picture. But the importance here is that the aneurysm was so big that it was pushing on the nerves that had to do, uh, have to do with uh, eye, mo uh, eye movement. And that's why you see the aneurysm has a little, it looks like a heart. It's indented from the nerves that control movement of the eyes. That's key. The pressure into the eye uh, into into the nerves of the eye resulted in her double vision. If she hadn't gotten treatment, anecdotally we know that when aneurysms start causing these symptoms of double vision, they're very close to rupture. So so obviously she did not have a ruptured aneurysm, but she was treated probably very close to that point. So again, very important to be able to uh, recognize these symptoms. Another lady, uh, really bad headache. Not a ruptured aneurysm, but extremely worst headache of her life. Possibly, uh, we, we do believe that if, if somebody develops uncontrolled headaches uh, and they have a brain aneurysm, the aneurysm might be changing. In this case, you see a very large aneurysm. The treatment in her case was flow diverting stenting of the aneurysm, which really means we place a, a stent which l acts like an internal brace of in the blood vessel that diverts the flow away from the aneurysm. And eventually, you see on the uh, far right, after six months, the aneurysm is gone. So, so you know, we have all these ways to get ahead of the problem. It's a shame that we haven't gotten better at understanding, knowing about the problem, screening about it, and uh, obviously treating probably is the easiest uh, part. Clipping, as I said, is the traditional way to treat aneurysms, and this is from one of our cases. Sometimes clipping is the only option. Uh, very rarely, I would say, these days. It, less and less and less. Uh, the overwhelming majority of the cases, uh, endovascular treatment is the, uh, the best option. Sometimes we do combined approaches, so that's, that's the benefit of being in a comprehensive stroke center like Good Samaritan Hospital. You have the ability to do both open endovascular procedures or a combination of these procedures. Here we see us accessing the internal carotid artery directly to coil an aneurysm because access from below was limited because of the the anatomy inside the chest. So, you know, we have all the options today. Again, you know, we need to get ahead of the problem. And as I said before, you got to get treatment for a brain aneurysm in a comprehensive stroke center. And Good Samaritan Hospital Medical Center is the only comprehensive stroke center in the South Shore of Long Island and the only one in Suffolk County certified both by the Joint Commission and the Department of Health. We're in the center of providing this care. Uh, 
when receiving referrals from other uh, some of our sister hospitals in Catholic Health Services of Long Island or from other uh, facilities. And we do believe in these four pillars. You know, I showed you that we're strong in clinical care, but, but we cannot do what we do without quality improvement and all our cases are under constant review uh, and quality improvement uh, research. We do a lot of research here. I'm gonna show you a couple of the clinical trials that we're participating in and obviously education. And what we're doing today is part of that educational initiative and bringing to you people like Todd and others who have uh, a national standing when it comes to brain aneurysms is really key in getting the word out. A couple of the clinical trials that we have that are specific to brain aneurysms, uh, this is called Option Grids. This is a, uh, a tool that started in the UK, actually came to Dartmouth in the United States, and then we adopted it in a trial trying to, uh, to increase shared decision making. So if you find that you have an unruptured brain aneurysm and you're trying to, uh, to identify the right treatment option, endovascular open, what kind of endovascular treatment option, we're using these uh, shared decision making tools to get the patient to be part of the decision making process and not for the doctor to dictate what direction uh, things will go. And uh, apologize. Another one I wanted to share with you, uh, which is very exciting for us, is uh, a clinical trial for a new device called Evolve, which is a flow diverting stent. Uh, you know, definitely one of the newest and uh, and and more pronounced uh, devices when it comes to flow diversion. And 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 Good Samaritan Hospital is working on becoming one of the sites uh, for this FDA approved uh, clinical trial. So you know, we're trying to obviously engage the patients, but also bring new treatments. Uh, to uh, the patients uh, here. Uh, we're out there trying to spread the word in a much smaller scale than wh what Todd does, and, and again, we'll, we'll talk about that with him in a, in a second, but we're out there talking a lot about brain aneurysms and, and trying to uh, not only spread awareness in our community, but also in, uh, you'll see on the bottom right, the Spanish community, uh, where we have limited uh, ability to penetrate sometimes because of the language barrier. So we're, you know, we, we're on the radio, we're on TV, and and uh, we're out there trying trying to uh, uh, to get the word out. Uh, we support survivors. We've been sponsoring uh, the National Stroke Association uh, Walk for Stroke, uh, obviously, uh, actually since 2017, and uh, this year it, it's going to be virtual. And most importantly, I think we have one of the most prominent support groups when it comes to survivors. Uh, on Long Island, and uh, our support group, uh, you know, had had the privilege to have the endorsement of the Lisa Foundation since early on, and and we've grown dramatically now. Todd has been in our support group, has spoken uh, to uh, to our, our members there, and we welcome people not only that we've treated, but outsiders also. You know, it is really important to get the word out and also to support these folks uh, in their recovery. Sometimes, you know, you might survive something, uh, a life-threatening experience like a brain aneurysm rupture, and as far as physicians are concerned, you're fine. Uh, you know, everything is moving, uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with you, but that's not necessarily true. You know, a lot of folks have survivor's guilt. Um, they, they're having a hard time coping with the fact that they now need to go back to life and uh, get out of their house and they're worried, can this happen again? And so being in an environment like this a support group can really help folks into uh, their path for recovery. And the Lisa Foundation has been keen supporting our support group, but also uh, these initiatives across the country. We've received a lot of awards for this work, uh, and I, I think our, our most proud achievement obviously has been our recognition as a comprehensive uh, stroke center. We're out there on social media, and we're using social media today to get to you, and uh, this is not, this is obviously uh, a very involved slide, but I wanted to show you that this, uh, this program uh, started from very little and now it's making progress dramatically and, and we're able to do a lot, of first, uh, a lot of firsts here at Good Samaritan Hospital uh, Medical Center way before other centers in, in New York or you know, sometimes even the country. Most importantly, we used a new stent recently and we were the second commercial application of that stent in the United States after the center uh, where the inventor of the stent works and for a brain aneurysm so we're very proud of that and, and you know with that I want to you know I just gave you a brief overview of what goes on with uh, with brain aneurysms and with that I want to bring uh, Todd in the conversation and you know I know I know that he's He's probably at that point, uh, at this point, sick and tired of sharing uh, his story. But I know some of you have seen him before, but some of you have not. And I really, I think his story is really impactful of what can happen if we do not spread the word, if we do not get ahead of the problem, 
um, and uh, it's it's also painful for him to share it every time. But uh, I'll kindly ask him to kind of share with us what what happened and why he's in the field of brain aneurysms. Well, it was uh, I think probably late February, early March, twenty fifteen, when Lisa, uh, <clears throat> my wife Lisa, who was a very well known television journalist for uh, ABC News. Uh, started developing these massive headaches probably a couple times a week. Um, and she would always describe them the same way as, you know, I, she'd always say I'd have the worst, absolute worst headache of my life. And um, we would just kind of chalk it up to, you know, everyday stress of life. And she had a very you know, rigorous, you know, work routine and was up, you know, very early in the morning and managing the household with the kids and, and everything else. And uh, so we just dismissed it. And then, um, you know, on March 19th of 2015, uh, that mm -hmm. morning, I, you know, 930 in the morning, I got a phone call uh, from one of the hospitals in New York City um, that uh, telling me that they had her and they didn't know why. And so she had obviously, you know, ruptured. Um, I said, you need to check her head. She's been complaining of massive headaches for the last several weeks. So uh, she, uh, she didn't make it. And, and we took her off the next life. day. Um, and my commitment to her before we took her off life support after I told her I loved her and that I would raise the boys the way she wanted me to, as I said, that I would do whatever, you know, I could to prevent this from happening others so that was really you know the what ignited the the idea of the foundation um, uh, and 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 kind of you know got things started for us and it was six months later that you know we launched september of 2015 launched the wow. foundation uh, and did so through some nationally televised you know interviews on fox news and you know abc um, to kind of talk about you know what brain annual were. I mean, we didn't know what a brain aneurysm was. Nobody had heard brain aneurysms. We certainly didn't know what, you know, signs and that, that there were signs and symptoms and what to look for. And, you know, had we known and had this foundation existed and been around 10, 15 years ago, there's no question in my mind that Lisa would be alive today and working right beside me and, and others at the foundation to advocate for this and, and help others around the world. So for how long were the headaches going on? You I said? would say probably she had them maybe two, three days a week over a period of about four, maybe five weeks. So, so as we discussed before, I mean that that's key, right? You know, for a period of four to five weeks, when you have new onset headaches, um, you know that that you know you've never experienced before. Right. As she's saying, the worst headache of my life. Yeah. Um, she probably got more warning than most people, to be honest. And that comes to show you that awareness uh, can save lives in this case. It's not, it's not so much, I mean, obviously, we would advocate all the way to screening and other things, but, but this is even beyond that. You know, you, there's warning signs, but, but we do not learn to recognize them. And I think that's what gets in the way. And the other important thing that I've kind of gotten from your story and also from your experience with the foundation is that I'm in the brain aneurysm business. Uh, it, but I never really knew how many people have been affected by brain aneurysms, how many prominent individuals, celebrities have had family members or they've been involved in somehow in, in, you know, in disasters that stemmed from brain aneurysms. And, and they've never really had the opportunity to speak about it until you gave them uh, a platform. platform to do so. I still don't think we touched the Oh, no, and I, you know, I've seen you know Bruno Mars, Whoopi Goldberg, and a lot of other people that have come forth through your platform to really express themselves and spread the word for others. Right. Well, that, you know, we've reached out to them and wanted to make them feel very much at home and um, you know to talk about their their stories. And they each you know we have between Whoopi and Bruno and and you know several 
sports athletes. I know the NFL athletes, also. You know. you, you've had multiple folks in the NFL. If, if uh, a lot of you don't know, um, I, we were talking about it earlier. I'm not sure if it's going on this year with everything going on and how sports are changing, but uh, there, was a, uh, uh, there was a program in, in the National Football League called my cleats, my cause, my, my cause, my clits, and uh, they. Uh, a lot of the athletes, especially the ones that have parent, have had parents or other family members that have had brain aneurysms, ruptures, and whatnot, um, they um, they uh, place the Lisa logo uh, and and the branding uh, on their shoes, and and uh, you know that that really promoted awareness uh, also. Um, but yeah, I, I, you're right. I don't think we've We've scratched the surface, but really we need folks like you that have the ability to get to, to speak to these people, to get them to come out and help with the awareness. Because the other thing is celebrities have a tremendous following. And uh, like everything, if, if, uh, if they're advocating for something, then we can really uh, we, we can really move things when it comes to policies, when it comes to understanding um, the patient level. This, this, this touches everybody. It runs the spectrum from small children to yes. senior citizens and everyone in between. And it's the ambassadors that we have at the foundation, for the most part, are people who've lost somebody. Yes. We know that, but we also know that there are a number of people out there who are very wealthy, millionaires or billionaires in some cases, who yeah. personally mm -hmm. survived a brain aneurysm been treated for one themselves who are not willing to talk about it because of the negative stigma that's attached. If it may be somebody who is very well known in the finance field, mm -hmm. for example, who doesn't want his clients or her clients knowing Just that they've that, had a brain yeah. aneurysm because well, that, they, they make a decision that goes the wrong way in financial markets, people are going to attribute it to, to that. You're you know, right. yeah. So it's, uh, it's something that as an industry that we need to overcome. Uh, and give some some thought to because it's not a it's not a disease. They've had an incident. Correct. That's the best way that or the way that I like to describe it. It's a treatable incident and can and, and can be a one and done scenario in their lifetime. Absolutely. And you know, one and done for what they experience, but then by by going afterwards and giving back to the community, I think they will definitely be saving lives, right. countless lives like Lisa's. Um, and, and, you know, her story makes the tragedy even more, the fact that she had all this warning all this time, uh, but had she known she would not be, uh, she would not be uh, in that position. Um, so when it comes to awareness, what additional things do you think need to happen, uh, either obviously through your foundation or from the industry at large, to make brain aneurysms more of a household? There's so many things. I, I mean, we've barely scratched the surface with the limited, you know, funding that we've been able to raise over the last, you know, five years. We've done. We're the most efficient organization in the space, and have done, done more. Uh, much more with with uh, the, the the money that we have had because we're able to leverage the relationships and contacts that I and others, you know, board members that we've assembled uh, have, you know, in other industries, uh, particularly media and marketing, uh, to kind of leverage those dollar, dollars and make them go a lot a lot further to get to get the word out. And you know the mission of the foundation is to create a national dialogue around brain aneurysms and an understanding around brain aneurysms in a way to do that in a way that will uh, improve the patient journey mm -hmm. and outcomes yeah. uh, along that that pendulum, and uh, you know to really be effective. Really, I mean we've done some very big things. We brought the you know first. Fortune 500 partners to this industry. We yep. partnered with CVS Pharmacy, for example, over the last few years, um, who have spread the word throughout the month of September in all their stores across the country about the and right. the Lisa Foundation. Yes, um, we've created you know two national public service announcements, which are the only two, the first two public service announcements ever created for brain aneurysms, and we've aired them on national television. 
um, one with Whoopi Goldberg, and that was the latest. And yeah. um, the one before that, our very first, was an animated uh, feat, uh, uh, public service announcement commercial that talked specifically to uh, a few of the different signs and symptoms. Um, and we've had these sports platforms, but what's really needed is a comprehensive, uh, multifaceted marketing campaign, education campaign that not only is has a consumer focus to it, but also has um, an emphasis on reaching certain sectors of the medical industry that uh, where we would have the, see the biggest impact. For example, you said earlier during your presentation that uh, the first uh, case that you put up there about this 27-year-old woman, she called EMS and they went to the house and triaged her and said, you're 27 years old, it's the worst headache of your life, you're fine. That should never happen, right? But that's a matter of educating EMTs. Uh, we also need to do the same thing for frontline emergency room personnel and hospitals across the country because it's a, it, what it, it's a matter of, it's not that they don't know about brain aneurysms, it's a matter of educating them and keeping brain aneurysms top of mind, particularly, you know, the, the warning signs and symptoms. So that as they are triaging and speaking with somebody who's presented themselves, that brain aneurysms are in the top five, you know, maybe it could be a brain aneurysm. Uh, they're in the top five considerations, you know, along with um, whatever the other four might be. And, you know, there are other conditions out there that that do do that and do a very good job, do it very well. Um, you know, American Heart and Stroke Foundation is an example because they cover ischemic stroke mm -hmm. and they have the FAST yep. program. The FAST program does not apply to brain aneurysm no. for the most part. And that's why it drives me crazy when this industry, from a, from a medical uh, perspective, continue to talk about brain aneurysms as part of the stroke family. We all know that, medically speaking, why that's the case, and it is true, but the doctors and their staffs and hospitals need to think about the patients. And so while it's okay to talk about brain aneurysms in terms of stroke at a medical conference uh, or during one of these classes, outside of those forms, it should be talked about and addressed as brain aneurysms because there's not one person in this country outside of the medical profession who understands that a brain aneurysm is, is, is or isn't a stroke. Yeah, you're 100% you're right on that. And the thing is, if you are lumping them with ischemic stroke, uh, then the signs and symptoms become face, arm, speech, time to call 911 very right. fast. Uh, and uh, you miss the most pertinent symptoms, headache, dizziness, uh, double vision, nausea, vomiting, which is what yeah, you know, buffer behind one of your eyes. Exactly. What, what could have saved some that? Yeah. And you know, yeah. I, I enjoy our conversations a lot. And I know Todd for the last three years or so. And uh, one of the first things he's ever told me, and kind of alluded to uh, as he was talking now, is the medical field doesn't understand marketing. I think this is one of the first things he told me because uh, that's what you're saying right now. You know, we, you know, to make an impact on the marketing side. In the community, you cannot, you know, it's not, it's not the medical field. Then you got to be clear about, you know, what the problem is, what the threat is, and what the treatment is possibly uh, to make an impact for people to understand. If you if you create murky waters, you're not going to have, you're not going to be impactful. And I think that's what really what what has set you apart from uh, from most organizations out there because you understand uh, how to to get that done and to tag on that. Uh, you spoke about the two public service announcements that you guys have uh, released. Uh, the first one, the second one was fantastic, obviously with Whoopi Goldberg, and that probably was more popular because you have well, a celebrity, iconic, right? Exactly, you have a celebrity on it, and and but but the first one is the one that really shook me, right? I treat brain aneurysms, as I said, all day, every day. You know, we treated a few today, but you know that's different than really seeing the impact of a ruptured brain aneurysm through an animation. Uh, but the words were so impactful, the message was so strong, and I would urge all of you guys to find that PSA. Where would that be available if they were to look it up on YouTube? Or it's, on, it's on our website, which is uh, 
uh, can be found at lisafoundation.org. We'd be happy to, you know, to give it to any hospital around the country that wanted to put it on their website as part of their ongoing education efforts for free. Um, you and know, that's why we created it as a resource and tool. And actually, I wanted to include it in our live today, but uh, apparently this technology does not behave well with live videos, so uh, we uh, shy away from it. But, but really, it's really impactful because it's boiled down to what matters. Uh, there's not a lot of useless information. No fluff no at all. Uh, and the message is crippling. Uh, if you watch the whole thing to the end, it kind of gives you perspective, obviously, about brain aneurysms, but I think life in general, right? You know, life-altering events. And what the message is, you know, if you're experiencing the signs and symptoms like Todd and I have been talking about, um, seek immediate medical attention, or, you know, there's not going to be another opportunity um, to go to your daughter's recital or to, you know, engage in all the other everyday activities that you're so used to and you're, you know, uh, ignoring that bad headache uh, for two or three weeks. Uh, and and that, that is really, that was, that was really strong. Uh, and, you know, I, 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 again, I do that every day, but uh, when I saw it a couple of years ago, I, I really, I, th I thought it was phenomenal. And did it make it to for an award? Was that the public service announcement? Yes. That, uh, yeah, it was. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it was our very it was the industry's very first and our first public service announcement. It was nominated by uh, PR News uh, for best nonprofit PSA of the year, and we finished runner up to United Way, uh, which That's invested, bombs, right? I think, you know. They must have invested three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in creating yeah. their PSA compared to our, you know, twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand dollar budget uh, to to produce ours. Uh, but ours was done again. We leveraged relationships and contacts, and uh, very blessed. And we were very proud of the final, you know, output and product, and uh, and and know that it was uh, helpful and attributed to saving lives. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's fantastic. And what uh, your relationship with CVS? What plays in, in the stores? Is it these public service announcements? That the yeah, they have an in-store radio network. As you uh, people walk in, consumers walk in. That you know usually plays music yeah. or they're promoting some special sale gotcha. uh, in store. And so they've aired our public service announcements through that in-store uh, radio network, and they've also supported us on their social media channels. Gotcha. So, so that's obviously a lot of awareness. Um, another component to get ahead of the disease would be screening, right? And what's what's the foundation's take on screening? And and before I get your thought on that, uh, I know you and I have been talking a lot about launching uh, one of the first few national or uh, local screening programs. Uh, pandemic got in the way of that uh, this year. Uh, but uh, hopefully next year we'll be able to do it. And, and the goal was obviously to uh, start screening people either with family history or concern or what have you for brain aneurysms. And, and that's done very simply with a, with a special MRI called MRA, MR angiography. that doesn't have any radiation or contrast, frankly, and you can get an answer within minutes about whether you do or you don't have a brain aneurysm or some sort of neurovascular problem. And we were going to do that for free here at Good Samaritan Hospital for the month of September together with the Lisa Foundation. So this was a collaborative effort. But but maybe you want to talk to us a little bit about what your thoughts are on screening and also where you see advocacy going. Because obviously screening nationally is a bigger discussion. It has to do with insurance companies. has to do with reimbursement. Because uh, you know obviously hospitals will not going to start doing it for free uh, just because. And so so what, what were your thoughts on that and where can we go from well, I think it's one of the, again one of those uh, situations where nobody has even begun a dialogue about screening with hospitals around the country or with the life insurance companies. Um, you know, it took I don't know how many years for Susan B. Coleman um, yep. to, as a catalyst, and kind of to begin that dialogue with the industry. Um, probably 15, 20 years before you know breast cancer screenings became yep. annualized and routine for women. Absolutely. And so this is uh, another you know area where the foundations and, and this industry has has not led. And one of the reasons why the Lisa Foundation was created, um, and uh, you know we've had. Um, 
you know, some, some things in mind and some very preliminary conversations. But, I mean, you know, screening is, is, is the end result of everything that we do um, at the Lisa Foundation. I mean, it, it's to encourage people, you know, to go get screened if you're concerned, if you have family history, if someone in the family, first generation or second generation, has uh, either survived or died from a brain aneurysm. The issue, one of the issues is there's so, there's so many different opinions in terms of who should get screened, right? There's no consensus. You know, for somebody as a, and you're a medical professional, but for somebody in this industry and societies, SBIN and SNIS, to mm -hmm. sit here and tell me that my two boys should not go get screened because only my wife died. That has to be at least two in the family mm -hmm. before somebody goes get screened. To me, that's crazy. I mean, I, that, that's absolute. Doesn't make any sense yeah, whatsoever, right? Yeah. Uh, and I can, I can, I can personally attest to the devastation, you know, and impact on a on a family from losing somebody to a brain aneurysm. So now you want me to lose a second person, a family member, before we go get somebody else screened in the family? Doesn't make sense. Anyway, so I mean, um, it's imperative. People should not wait. Yeah. Um, you know, they should seek and consult a medical professional or their physician um, on on screenings. And screenings are so easy mm -hmm. to get done, and they're so cost effective today. They're really, the you know, the barrier to entry in terms of the expense is not what it used to be. The costs absolutely. are coming down. Yeah, absolutely, especially for MRIs, you know, they're very routine these days. And the MRI itself is, is not that long of a test. Um, and so, you know, obviously the Lisa Foundation is, is one of the leaders, if not the leader, uh, when it comes to, to brain aneurysm awareness uh, and advocacy. Uh, and as we all understand, this doesn't um, happen uh, without funding and without support from, uh, from us, from the community, from, in, from the industry partners. Uh, and from the medical uh, societies. Uh, you know, this year has been obviously a lot more weird than uh, other years. Uh, and uh, actually this, this month is uh, the month where the Lisa Foundation really shines uh, through uh, one of the best events of the year when it comes to brain aneurysms. Uh, and that's their annual gala in New York City, uh, which we've attended multiple years uh, uh, with Good Samaritan Hospital. And we've been honored last year to also speak in the event uh, but, uh, you know, that's obviously your major fundraiser, and, and uh, I would say tremendously successful. I don't know of another event in the brain aneurysm world where so much star power, first of all, uh, you know, joins us uh, for the event. You know, people, you know, uh, obviously uh, primetime TV anchors and, and other folks that uh, normally would not really care about brain aneurysms, they're there and they're showing their support. and either remotely or in person, um, and athletes and, uh, and, and celebrities. And, and so, you know, this year that didn't happen, I assume. Uh, and, and so how, how do you cope with, uh, with the challenges and what, what can our uh, viewers do to support the foundation uh, since, you know, we're not, we're not really uh, in a regular uh, environment? environment. Yeah. Well, I think it's <coughs> COVID uh, since March is placed a very big strain on nonprofits in general um, because corporate funding in many cases was frozen. Uh, individual donations uh, have been greatly reduced as a people as a result of people being, you know, let go from their jobs yeah. and you know now they, they used to have two household incomes and now they only have one. Um, fundraisers in general, whether it be you know walks or runs or bowling events, you know anything that was in person, um, you know it just hasn't been able, uh, has not been permitted to take place because of this. So uh, you 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 buckle down. We anticipated this uh, to an extent. The foundation did, and we're kind of ahead of the game and batting down the hatches um, and controlled costs. You know very early on. Um, which I'm, I'm proud to say that we, you know, we led in that way, and we have maintained a, a focus uh, primarily on social media mm -hmm. and trying to engage people 
and social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, YouTube, other channels. Uh, and in some cases, we've actually doubled down on our efforts in that in that way to bring and attract new followers sure. uh, and new people to you know introduce them to the Lisa Foundation, to brain aneurysm, to topic because this is a this is a health topic that men, women, and families need to know about across the country, just like they do breast cancer or leukemia or heart disease or any other number of, of health issues. And um, um, so, you know, we're, we're doing, you know, our best and, you know, donations as we bring more people into the fold, you know, donations are and people are doing online yeah. fundraisers, yeah. you know, through our Facebook page. People can go to, you know, find us on Facebook at Lisa Foundation. Uh, and or go to our website at lisafoundation.org and they can make a uh, whatever you know they're allowed to or, or, or can mm -hmm. uh, you know they can they can make a donation it could be as small as you know a dollar five dollars it all adds up and it's all important mm -hmm. and uh, and over not you know 90 percent of every <laughs> dollar that comes in uh, goes directly to our you know programs to create national awareness and educate the public about this condition. So, you know, it, it is, it's the money you need. You need money to kind of facilitate and create programs and distribute yeah. them around the country to educate people about anything. It's important that we know you guys have done a tremendous job without a lot of resources. So, you know, obviously, uh, kudos to you guys. I know another uh, mission that's very near and dear to your heart is supporting survivors. Right. And, uh, I spoke a little bit before about how you graciously supported our support group and came and spoke to our survivors here, uh, and I and I know uh, you know that it was tremendously well received. I uh, had patients talk about it for uh, for weeks after you came. Um, what are what are the? I mean, obviously, support groups now can be a little challenging uh, with in-person meetings uh, in the, at least the short term. Uh, but what are the kind of long-term plans of the foundation to engage more support groups? I know you had an interest in nationally also uh, creating some sort of platform. Um, will you will you maybe engage social media? And I know you're seriously thinking that uh, about that. Will you engage the social media avenues that we have to kind of get the word out and bring more support, more survivors uh, into the fold and, and obviously support them. Either remotely or, or in person. Somewhere. Well, I think I think I think the support group area is one of the most anemic in terms of this space and this condition. Um, I've been greatly underwhelmed in terms of what I've seen overall. What you guys do here at Good Samaritan has been tremendous and very robust and 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 kind of the gold standard for you know, physical in-person support groups around the country. But I think brain aneurysm survivors are probably the most misunderstood and, and underappreciated uh, group of patients in the world and you know, what they go through. Uh, most people who survive a brain aneurysm are altered for life. They're never, they're never the same again. And by that, I mean that they may look okay physical appearance-wise on the outside, but what's going on inside is very different. And whether it be suffer chronic fatigue or short long-term memory loss, or they may experience aphasia, they may experience PTSD. I mean, there are so many different, you know, conditions that affect brain aneurysm survivors because of what has happened in mm -hmm. the brain Absolutely. and um, so I think I really do think that the future of support groups is going to be through social media where uh, anybody can dial in from around the world you know at the same time in the comfort from the comfort of their own living room in front of the wire uh, fireplace with a you know their beverage of choice <laughs> and through a zoom meeting or, or whatever the the platform may be and interact with 
other survivors around the world who are experiencing similar difficulties and ongoing um, ongoing conditions and 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 symptoms um, and kind of share those and commiserate you know with one another and you can pull in some of the leading rehabilitation and um, other experts psychiatrists probably. psychiatrists and for, for exact exactly that's one um, to talk about ways that they can better cope and deal with and in some ways try to uh, do things that will improve the condition or lessen it over time yeah. and so it's very difficult it's 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 a very complex and very you know it's an issue uh, issue but it's one that's very near and dear to my heart and then us at the lisa foundation and very important and we do want to you know continue to focus on uh you know kind of bringing best in class quality you know support services to brain aneurysm survivors and i and i you know you, you spoke very eloquently about you know all the all all, all the feelings and, and how much these patients might suffer despite the fact that they look they look good physically uh but uh you know you'll see todd is a trooper and he doesn't really mention how much uh you know the, the families of patients are suffering uh and sometimes and in our support group, we really uh, highly stress how important it is to either come with your family or have your family. Sometimes the patient doesn't want to come. Well, the family is welcome. Or sometimes there is a there is a death uh, from a brain aneurysm, and at which point the family needs support. And not to put you on the spot, right. but what's your personal experience? What you know? How how has your family coped with this with this problem? Well, I think. Uh, my situation is, is probably no different than, uh, many, many, mo maybe most other brain aneurysm survivors, um, whether you've lost somebody or have somebody who survived in that it's, you know, the analogy I've used for the last five years, it's imagine a glass jigsaw puzzle that falls to the ground from about four stories up and shatters mm -hmm. into pieces. And what you try to do is you try to put as many of the pieces back together as you possibly can, but the jigsaw puzzle will never fit exactly same. the same way ever again. And, um, and many of the pieces are completely broken forever. So that's the, fi the family dynamic. And it, it permanently alters your life and that of your family and not mm -hmm. just your immediate family, but the extended family and, and very close, you know, friends uh, of the family as, as well. So um, that's why for, you know, for this, a condition like this, um, it's so imperative to really raise the bar and challenge ourselves as an industry and really come together instead of working in our own silos Absolutely. to to create that national awareness and educate the public in a mass way um, so that we can not only save as many lives but save as many families from falling into the despair Absolutely. Well, that was very powerful. So what's in the future for the foundation? What are you guys looking forward to? Uh, I guess maybe you cannot share everything, but uh, I know, for example, in the last gala, we were talking a little bit about getting to the patient, individualized consultations. Your guys were, were working with some platforms uh, uh, to, to make that happen. Uh, what can we look forward to? You know, realistically, I think... Uh you know, nobody knows what the world's going to look like six months from now. Hopefully, yeah. um, you know, COVID passes at some point and we get back to some level of normalcy in the world. But, uh, you know, right now, I think on a short, all we can look to, uh, Kimon, is really what what's going to, you know, what are we going to be doing on a short term, you know, six month 
rolling basis mm -hmm. because there's so much uncertainty. So for us, it's a continued um, pressing forward on, you know, with some of our social media initiatives, trying to introduce the foundation and brain aneurysms to create awareness and education amongst new people who've never been exposed to it before. And we continue to do that and have dedicated um, paid campaigns on Facebook and other social media platforms to uh, grow our audience uh, and to introduce them to brain aneurysms, which has been very effective. Um, we will uh, be creating some additional uh, digital marketing uh, initiatives, you know, probably targeting one of the things that we want to do is we know females, for example, between the ages of 40 and 60 are the number one target the, the most affected in terms of brain aneurysms and for signs and symptoms um, and if you're a female who is type a you know the industry will never because no study's ever been done that's you know but it is true that most people most females who do develop a brain aneurysm are type a individuals and so we'll probably, you'll see us for the very first time, this industry has never launched a segmented, targeted uh, campaign towards, you know, that female demographic, 40 to 60 years old, really, and it really hit them very hard uh, with, you know, signs and symptoms messaging, as well yeah. as, you know, some of the other, you know, smoking, hypertension. Sure. Uh, contributing factors so we'll be we'll be doing that and um, as part of an influencer social media influencer campaign and uh, and we've have you know a, a new public service announcement that is um, we have the concept locked down and ready to go we're just uh, probably don't share it no we're not going to share it, <laughs> it, 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 it but, but I'll tell you what it what it is it, it does focus on survivors and it focuses on exclusively on worst headache of life yes so again this has never been tried before and so what we want to do is we want to become part of the headache conversation yes. around the world mm -hmm. so the new psa will focus exclusively on worst headache of life it will be survivors who experienced worst headache describing what they experienced in their own words mm -hmm. and our hope is to you know, once that has aired, you know, throughout the country over a certain period of time, that as women begin to experience headaches in general, whether it's a migraine or a standard headache or worst headache of life, that brain aneurysms enter the overall the consideration and conversation about headaches. So that's that something that's really new and progressive and, and innovative. Uh, and, a, and a completely different approach from what the industry has ever attempted uh, before. So we're excited about that. And we have some other things that we're, uh, in, you know, planning, you know, behind the scenes that, you know, require funding and require a little more time to kind of bring to, you know, fruition, fruition and, uh, and, and bring them alive. But uh, we're very optimistic and very excited about what the future holds. I am too. Uh, but as, as you guys can see, Todd understands marketing uh, much better than the rest of us and uh, hence the targeted approach. And I think, you know, that's that's what makes the difference, really. Um, well, it's uh, it's been a treat today, Todd, uh, really from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for your friendship and thank you for uh, joining us here to spread awareness uh, for our audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all uh, Thank you. And uh, again, thank you all for uh, uh, staying with us and uh, listening to Todd. I, I, as I said, I think it was a treat. If uh, you want to reach us, uh, you can reach us at good-samaritan-hospital.org or strokecenterlongisland.org. And Todd, if you want to uh, give a little plug for the foundations. Uh, sure. Uh, it's uh, at, on Twitter and Facebook is at Lisa Foundation and the website is lisafoundation.org. Great. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in another lecture.